Good evening, everybody. Welcome to JV's 12 in the Morning Rants. I'm JV. Um, whether you're listening um, in the morning, day, or night, you're here now. So, let's do it right. That's right. Yeah. I'm a little juiced on, um, well, nothing really. Can you tell that it's starting to become that season? It's starting to become allergy season. I'm starting to sound a lot more stuffy. You can kind of hear it in my throat as well. Ugh. Yuck. At least it looks nice out. It looks pretty. I really appreciate how pretty it looks outside. Whatever the case. Um, welcome. Uh, we're going to talk about some Batman baddies tonight. In case you didn't see this well I don't maybe you just randomly clicked on a random video that happened to be this one so maybe you didn't know so um there we go we're gonna be talking about some Batman villains today particularly Batman um live action villains I should say I thought about ranking all of them but there's so many like side villains that kind of make appearances and I kind of get a little paranoid whether I was like, am I going to be able to remember them all? Because like, you, you forgot Kite Man. He was flying in the background in Batman Forever. <laughs> He's like, I see what's coming after this. I'm, I'm flying the fuck away from here. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's the smartest thing, Kite Man. I heard there's actually a, a comic that makes Kite Man actually like a legit villain. I need to check that comic out. That'd be legit. And yes, Kite Man is actually a villain. Is one of those villains that everyone make fun of. Like, can't you believe that he's one of the... This, this is the real villain. Isn't that weird? Comics are weird. <laughs> and that kind of brings up a weird memory. Um, I went to see a movie with my boy, Jose. And um, Third Party. And Third Party... Was really not digging um, the main villain's name being Ocean Master. And just really just stuck on like, oh my god, it's such a stupid name. And like, it's also comic books. Some of the names are pretty fucking stupid. You just learn to get used to it. But hey, you know, at least the writing for them is usually pretty good. Even though a lot of it could be a bit... Generic at times to be on the real if I had to be on the real Besides I like Aquaman. I'm looking forward to the second I can't wait for it Anyways, uh, before we get to this list um, Because I don't think I'm gonna do a video about my worst Villains list so I figured I'll just kind of tell you right off the bat in no particular order even though I do have Specifically one that is going to be, you know, the one. The worst. And it's pretty obvious. Uh, Probably one of the least egregious ones, but, you know, I have to put her on here. Talia al Ghul. uh, Just not that good. Uh, But like I said, not... She's on the worst, but she's not like... Terror. Eh, she is kind of bad. That death scene, though, is really hard to get over. <laughs> that death scene, like, my father's work has been done. Eh, or whatever the fuck she does. <laughs> I think, um, what the heck is it? How it should have ended made fun of it, too. It's like after she dies. <laughs> Commissioner Gore's like, worst death ever. <laughs> it's... It's like, they're not wrong. That was... <laughs> it just looked weird. Um, She is fine as hell. Can't, can't, can't lie about that. Uh, uh, we can't mention a worst without mentioning Tommy Lee Jones' Toothface. Which was almost seen as sabotage. Because, you know, he didn't want to do the film. And then he was on a film with Jim Carrey, which he despised. 
So he tried to, you know, out Jim Carrey the Jim Carrey, not realize that Jim Carrey's a master at his craft. So by him trying to do so, eh, it ended up making him look stupid. And yet Jim Carrey still stole that film. That kind of a little embarrassing. Not only did you put out a stupid performance and trying to make fun of you know, the you know coworker that you're playing in the movie with, he ends up still stealing the film anyway, and you look even more ridiculous for doing so. So, I mean, in most movies, Tom, uh, I love Tommy Lee Jones as an actor. But in this particular case, it's just like, ugh. Ugh. No bueno. No bueno. And then, um, if this was a top five worst, um, the last three are easy. Um, Batman or Robin. All three of them are terrible. But if I had to pick one that's the worst, um, that's easy too. It's Bane. Um, you could say there was terrible acting from Uma Thurman and, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, some people have argued that, you know, Uma Thurman, you know, she's, her performance, she's like the only actor that, you know, really knows what kind of movies this is, and she just takes full advantage of it. I guess with that argument, you could say Arnold kind of knows what he's getting himself into as well. And to give those two some credit, at least they have some resemblance of their characters, like characterizations, not just looks. The only thing that Bane in that movie has any resemblance of the other Bane is, you know, th- the way he looks. He's all swollen jacked and, you know, they did kind of, you know, have that lucha. It's funny, they give him the mask and this is how you can tell they never really read into it. I mean, you can kind of tell with how they treated the character. But they just give him a mask and they don't even, it's like... They don't even question why, why has he even got that mask? Oh, it's just because it's a comic book or whatever. It's like, no, because he was part of Lucha Libre, you know, Mexican wrestling. And um, they usually wear a mask. And that's where Bane, <laughs> that's where Bane's from. You know, he started out just being a wrestler, just pretty much killing people before he was just like, you know, I'm actually going to, maybe I should actually kill like Batman. I should break that man. But then... Um, he did break the bat, but then he went on to, you know, get broken himself. Or, not really broken, but he beat his ass. Beat his ass. Um, uh, yeah, so, yeah, besides the looks of the costume and how big he is, and the fact that he gets powered up by Venom, that's basically it. No resemblance of the Bane character is to be present. I mean, even though you're using, like, the Venom to power him up, in reality, you could have just dressed him up as anybody else and called him whatever you want. And, you know, you could just make some swole dude, Poison Ivy's, um, you know, Poison Ivy's, um, lackey or whatever, which is what Bane is. Some things never change. Bane always has to take a step back for a lady. Well, you can, I guess you can say he's a bit of a gentleman that way. Which is, you wouldn't think that from looking at him. So, get the best of both worlds with Bane. I guess. So, I guess I can give respect. But still, Bane is the worst Batman villain out of all the live action films. Uh, all right. Now we're going to get into, well, I only have, I can't really say he's a, I'll give a couple honorable mentions. Um, I'll put um, Jared Leto's Joker on there, on, on here, because, you know, even though he did get a little bit of redemption in um, the Justice League Snyder cut, you know, it, Suicide Squad is still a thing, and that's still nasty. It's still a nasty taste to have in the on the tip of your tongue. So that's a thing. 
And then um, there's... I almost didn't think about mentioning him. Because technically the film he was supposed to be in never happened. But <clears throat> what could have been? What could have been? But Deathstroke was supposed to be in a Batman film. He was supposed to be right across Ben Affleck's Batman. And it would have been fucking sweet. <sighs> Makes me sad. What could have been? What really could have been? And then, um... Uh, I guess I could put a little Barry, whatever his last name is, I can't remember, from, uh, from the deleted scene of the Batman. You know, it looks, it looks fine enough. I think he looks cool. You know, definitely he'll need a lot, see a lot more. Can't wait for that Arkham series. It's a great way to, you know, introduce, get a lot of backstory from these villains Without having to worry about, you know, cramming it into the movie while also trying to tell your story. It's a, I like it. It's a good way. It's it's kind of a better alternative what, than what like Sony was trying to do. Where they were just going to make a separate movie for everybody. It's just like, just make a little mini-series. I mean, they still could do that now. Make a little mini-series. Get your Sinister Six, and, you know, they each get their own episode. Explain them and all that, and all that shit. Short, sweet, to the point. You don't have to make a second um, episode, or a second season or anything. Just introduce the villains you need, and then after they all get their episodes, you get the hell out. And then you can prepare your next Spider-Man movie. Assuming that you didn't... Take a major shit on Spider-Man 2 and you could actually, you know, have the fans to back you for that one. It's a totally different hero and a totally different tangent. A totally different thing. Totally, totally, totally different. But yeah, potential, potential, potential. That's basically these honorable mentions, all the potentials. Okay. With all that out of the way, here are my top... 10 Batman live action villains. Let's see, off the top. Um, at number 10, this one actually kind of shocked me, but when I really thought about it, um, Jim Carrey's J- The Riddler. I'm gonna say the Joker. In some ways, dude, could you imagine a Jim Carrey Joker? I honestly think. That would have been really cool. I think if Jack Nicholson hadn't already been the Joker, then he could have been. He would have been wicked. Speaking of people that could have been the Joker, I think it was supposed to be. No, I think I think they offer the uh, Robin Williams the Joker role in the the first Batman movie. But then they, and I don't know what happened, but he ended up not getting and they gave it to Nicholson. And then they wanted to give him the Riddler, and I, thought, I think it's the Riddler. I may have my villains all messed up here, but they wanted him to come back for forever. And then, um, because of the whole, what happened with the first movie, um, Robin was just like, no, fuck you guys. I ain't falling for this shit again. He's like, okay, buddy. Your choice, I guess. But whatever the case, um, yeah, Jim Carrey's the Riddler. Um, I remember watching these movies again and thinking to myself, like, I can't, like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna watch this movie, and then when I come out of it, I'm just gonna tear right into Jim Carrey's Joker, or Riddler, and I'm just gonna, oh, I'm just not gonna be nice. But even though some of that is true, like, when he's actually in costume, like, his Riddler, Riddler, then, yeah, that's kind of more, it's like, he's just the, somewhat of the Jim Carrey character, you know, just making wacky noises with Tommy Lee Jones, and it's like, ugh, whatever. I mean, he was fun, I guess. 
I will say, though, when he's actually like Edward Nigma, he actually surprised me with like how he did in that movie. I was surprised how, you know, coming out of this, I'm like, you know what? I don't, I don't know if it was intentional, but I, I want to say it is. Um, he is picking up, like, a lot of the weird little mood swings and, you know, kind of, like, mannerisms of Edward Nigma and how he would be. And it's like, like I said, I don't know if it's, but if, if truth be told, um, Joel Schumacher was, a uh, big comic book fan so maybe he knew maybe he knew something that we didn't know but um that was a really welcome surprise going back into these batman films that i came out of with that i ended up uh, being pleasantly surprised and then on the flip side we had (laughs) get it on the flip side we had toothface and he was actually fucking terrible tommy lee what the fuck were you thinking? Alright, so... Next! At number 9. And the only reason this one is at number 9 is because the series he's in, or the run of movies he's in, he's underutilized. Despite the fact he shows up in each of the trilogy films. Um, Scarecrow. Um, despite the fact he gets the... Like I said, he's in all three films. Um, The second film, you know, it's just kind of like, oh shit, there's Scarecrow, that's kind of cool, but it doesn't really do anything. It's just supposed to be like, oh, 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 he's there! Um, His cameo in um, The Dark Knight Rises is a lot better. It actually kind of makes sense for his character. It's like, oh, that's cool, I like that. Um, Scarecrow, it's, you know... In my opinion, you know, there is another villain in this that does take, you know, his spot of, you know, actually being the, actually, the actual villain of this movie. Actually, one of my favorite ones is, whatever the case, I wanted to have Scarecrow higher on this list, but when I really thought about it, I looked at everybody else on this list. And I couldn't bring myself to do it. Because it's like. <sighs> they just. They just messed him up. Or they didn't mess him up. They just didn't use him enough. They had it there. They just needed to util- utilize him more. And Killian Murphy did good. He was a good. Um, I liked it. And uh, they could also have been a little bit more creative with. um. Of like some of the illusions that people would have with the scarecrow toxin. Which I know a lot of people give them shit for that. And I like it. But you know they they could have definitely gone a little bit more imaginative. But I think they're also trying to keep it a little bit more realistic. So that kind of you know that kind of limits how creative they can be. I don't know. It is what it is. But yeah. Uh, Scarecrow's my number nine. And, um, speaking of villains, I did not want to have this low on the list. We have at number eight, Bane. Um, I'm not gonna lie. They do my boy dirty towards the end of a movie that was... His movie. And despite the fact that, you know, I I have a lot more problems with The Dark Knight Rises than I remember. It's actually, it's really good, I guess. But, you know, the script just isn't that good. But it seems like everything with Bane was solid. Like, everything with, with Bane was solid until the very and now I don't plan on making this very eh, I guess I kind of make it a little bit spoilery so I'll, I'll have to put that this is kind of a spoiler a video I could try not to but I think I unintentionally <laughs> did some spoilers anyway and one of these guys on here is going to be a spoiler thing anyway so fuck it this is going to have to be spoilers I didn't plan on it but it's like I kind of have to especially with one of these villains I just can't not spoil the movie 
and talk about him. Oh, God. Just thinking about it gives me the hiccups. But, yeah. Bane was, you know... He was such an intimidating villain. Um, He had such great... You know, the writing for him was so great, which also made the writing that wasn't so great in the rest of the movie stick out. That that scene of him breaking the bat is genuinely, like, one of my favorite Batman scenes in a Batman movie. Which is weird, because it's Batman nearly dying. But, I, I, dude, that was, like, the only part of the whole film. When I watched it the first time, I was actually, like, in my chair, like, shaking, like, oh my god. Is he gonna fucking do it? <laughs> He's gonna fucking break him, break him, break him! And he did, and I was so happy. I, like, leaned back on my chair, I was like... Uh, was that as good for you as it was for me? And then the person next to me was like, What? What? Uh, oh, yeah, there's people here. Uh, don't do good. Uh, you, can, you can just enjoy the movie. I'm sorry. And then I heard someone whisper behind me, It was good for me, too. What the fuck? But yes, they almost had Bane right, but then, uh, then they had to do my boy dirty at the end. Turned out this whole plan that you thought Bane was the mastermind of was actually the, you know, he was just a puppet. The real puppeteer was Talia al Ghul, and then it wasn't just the fact that, you know, Bane kind of got demoted in front of all of us and his credibility kind of got chipped down. I'm not going to lie, pretty significantly. But then he just gets shot down by Catwoman and dies like a bitch. And it's just... Ugh. They do my boy so dirty in this movie. Why? You guys were doing so good. And then you just totally shit the bed on the landing. What the fuck happened? That one makes me the saddest on this list. Honestly. To be honest. Alright. Um, this might seem kind of low for people, this next one, but I'm mostly keeping it very low because, I don't know, it's my, go fuck yourselves. Uh, at number seven, Jack Nicholson's Joker. Now, listen here, I understand this may seem pretty low for some people. But yes, um, Heath Ledger's Joker is on here as well. And as much as I love Jack Nicholson's Joker, you know, if I'm going to have another Joker on this list, you know, I kind of, you know, I kind of want to separate them a little bit. And if I actually had to be really honest, you know, there are some villains that I do prefer over Nicholson's Joker, which, you know what? I like it. And like I said, when I watched um, Batman again, that really is like Jack Nicholson's movie. He just... He just takes that role to a whole new level. There's a reason when Heath Ledger came to the Joker role in The Dark Knight, um, even before Heath Ledger took the role, there, there was a reason why they had such a hard time to get a jo- an actor to play the Joker. Because Jack Nicholson just... He set the bar high. And no one thought you can compete against that. No one. So you got to give him kudos. And I really do. I love this Joker. But, you know... I can't... I can't lie. I have villains... That uh, I prefer over the... um The Joker now. And besides, I have a new Joker in my heart. I'm sorry, Jack. I still care for you. Anyways, number six, we got... Oh, I gotta do the snappy things. This will close out the first half of this list. Is... uh, Is his name Colin Farrell? Yeah, Colin Farrell's The Penguin. 
Now, even though I did like Danny DeVito's um, Penguin, and I almost feel like at the time he was really the only guy that could have played him. I don't know why. It just seems like it fits him so well. But, you know, some of the writing they did with him, he's a little... He's a little perv. He was, like, disgusting and grotesque, which is kind of the point of the character, but... At least in that movie, but, you know... They just went a little too far with it. Then we get to the Batman, and it's funny. I didn't actually expect to go into this liking his penguin as much as I do. Now, in a lot of ways, the reason this just shies away from the top five, well, to be perfectly honest, in a In a matter of time, I can honestly see this guy climbing up this list quite a bit. Because this is only his first film. This is only his first film. So I'd be really interested, you know, to... Because this is like pre-Penguin Penguin. I mean, yeah, he's still got the nickname, but he's not like... You know, he's not up in like the... You know, the crime lords that, you know, he will soon be in, especially since you know, something happened in a certain movie that caused him to, you know, leave the door open for him to, you know, cl- climb up in the rankings as the Gotham City's crime boss, you know, the king of the castle, so to say. And, <clears throat> yeah, Colin Farrell, man, that dude just, especially when he's playing villains, that dude just fucking... Has a fucking blast. Even with the role with like. Um horrible bosses. He's so fucking good in that film. He's just. He's just a fun actor. And. Also kudos to the. Kudos to the. Freaking people in the makeup department. You cannot recognize this man. In this. There's a couple times where you can kind of hear him. When he's doing the voice. But I'll tell you what. If. I didn't know he was casted as the Penguin. No one told me. And you, I would just uh, watch the whole movie and, you know, try to figure out who it is. You wouldn't know. I think I hear Colin Farrell because I'm aware that it's him. But would I really hear it that way if, you know, I didn't know it was him? Would I be able to see some of his, you know, recognizable facial features if I didn't know it was him? Who knows? Probably not. I'm like good with recognizing people. But whatever the case. Um, yes. I love that penguin. And I see great things coming out of him. In the future. That sounds fucking weird. Phrasing. But um, whatever the case. Let's jump into the top five. Which we start off with. Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. Now, I thought about um, Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman because, you know, she is pretty good in that movie. I think she still kind of gets edged out by Michelle Pfeiffer's because I encourage people to watch Batman or Robin you might not like the penguin scenes, but I I implore you to watch this movie again just to watch Michelle Pfeiffer's um, performance in this. There are, particularly in the scene where they're like at this charity event and, you know, Selena Kyle and Bruce Wayne are dancing together. That is such a great scene. It is such a great... Michelle Pfeiffer just... She goes 110% on that fucking role. And it's... It shows and you feel it. And it's just... It's awesome. And... You know... Zoe Kravitz very well could be, you know... Seen as the next, you know, definitive Catwoman... But not yet. The queen of the cats is still here. Oh, Catwoman. 
Michelle Pfeiffer still got that throne, yo. I tell you, I freaking tell you. Uh, yeah, go watch it. Go watch Michelle Pfeiffer kill that role. And um, come back to me and you can just explain to me why I'm right. And um, I can say, well, yeah, duh. Duh. I mean, I think the only thing you might argue with me with is like, why is she higher? I think once you hear the last four villains I have on this list, I mean, maybe you might differ with a couple. But, you know, I feel like, you know, it will be understandable. For example, Exhibit A, in this case, number four is... Aaron Eric Aaron Eckhart's tooth face. <laughs> I'm sorry. I took a massive pause because I knew I was going to forget his name. And then I almost said the Joker again. But yes, Aaron Eckhart's tooth face. Now we go from... We go from one side of the coin. I'm not going to apologize for this. And then we flip to the other side. Wait, wait, first, the one side of the coin where we have this terrible performance from a Tommy Lee Jones. Which, you know, if he had more respect for the material and his fellow actors, could have killed this role. He could have gave us a really cool Harvey slash Harvey, uh, yeah, a Harvey Toothface. But he decided to, you know, ham it up. Then, on the flip side... We got an Aaron Eckhart, who does respect the material, does take it seriously, and we get a fascinating story. We get a long hit. We get a long time to sit with Harvey Dent in this movie, seeing just how much of a, you know, a white knight that he is, and, you know, how he can be seen as Gotham's one hope of getting out of the dirt and grime that has been stuck in for so long. And just to see, you know, that slow burn you know figuratively and you know sadly literally as he goes from our white knight to this broken man split in half split between his moralities and the only way he can you know he can get any you know the only way he can you know stop the voices you know from arguing, he leaves it to a coin, a game of chance. He doesn't make the decisions, chance does. But yes, Aaron Eckhart's performance in this is amazing. He's such a great toothpaste in this film. Um, and it's such a great toothpaste performance because he gives such a great Harvey Dent performance. And it is crushing to see him turn. Because, you know, everybody... And some... I watched this video of... You know, I'm going to talk about Spider-Man again. But Sp- let's talk about Spider-Man PS4 for real quick. Where, you know, Peter Parker has... You know, he's working under Dr. Otto Octavius. Now, when you see him, you think to yourself, oh... Uh, there's, um, uh, there's Doc Ock. He's going to be a villain by the end of this game. I already know it. And then the developers are, alright, cool, cool, that's cool. We're going to make it so you don't want him to turn. We're going to make him, like, the best guy. Like, he's such a cool dude. He's so understanding. He's, like, a great father figure and all this shit. And we're going to give you, like, some genuinely good moments and... You know, when that time comes closer, you're just like, I really don't want you to turn to Doc Ock. Can you please just stay like this, please? They make you not want him to turn. And to come back to um, Toothface, they do the same here. You see the very best of him, and you think like, man... I do not want this guy to turn to Toothface. But man, when he turns to Toothface... It's amazing. He looks... The CGI on him is really good. And, you know... To go from the... You know, the pure white knightness... To, you know, the... Dark... 
um, Toothface. Um, it's so well, you know, the progression to it, you know, like I said, the slow burn. It's so well done and, you know, especially the climax of this film is so earned. It's... Christopher Nolan had said... Because, you know, a lot of people said, like, you know, they had all these plans for the next film before Heath Ledger died and all that. But, you know, Christopher Nolan has said, like, I don't make these movies plan on making a sequel. I just, you know, make this movie the best movie that I can. But, if I had known we were going to make a sequel, I would have kept Toothface alive. I'm not sure how big of a regret it, it was for him, but he's like... Yeah, if I knew we were going to make a sequel, I would have kept Toothface alive. So, that would have been really cool to see what they could have done with, you know, Toothface in the next film. But, sadly, he doesn't make it past The Dark Knight. But, hell of a fucking climax to that film. Hell of a climax. <sighs> Can't you tell? I love Toothface. Um, and especially after seeing what they did to my boy Toothface in, um, Batman Forever, it makes me even happier that, you know, he got his redemption story arc, even though he's a character that doesn't get redemption in the actual movie. He's whatever the case, not important, but now ladies and gents, we are in the top three. Let's start. This off with one of the newest villains on this list. Number three. The Riddler. Now, did I say that? The Riddler. Riddler. Riddlin. Riddlin. Riddliner. Riddliner. Paul Dano's Riddler. Very, like, before... You know, I kind of found a new, found appreciation for Jim Carrey's Riddler. I have been looking forward to them recreating Riddler in a live action film to kind of give him, you know, a, a more serious, you know, movie. A little bit less goofy, wacky, and zany. And in some ways, Paul Dano still kind of is, but in a creepy way. And what I like about, you know, what I really, what I really like, I might even say I really love about it. Well, first of all, you know, the Zodiac Killer, you know, inspirations are kind of hard to avoid. It's quite obvious, you know, where their inspiration for his look and how this, you know, you know, how he goes about his riddles and everything. It's kind of obvious where he gets it from. But, you know, they do point out, it's like, you know, the Riddler really could exist these days. In fact, you can kind of say that the Zodiac Killer, in a lot of ways, was very much like a real-life Riddler. So, you know, they're just kind of like, we'll just do that. You know, give, you know, mix the Zodiac Killer with a little bit of, you know, some of the Jigsaw's fun contractions from Saw. A little bot, you know, body horror kind of thing. You scare the fuck out of you, especially that mouse contraction. Ugh. And there's actually um, a book out there. There's a there's a little book. It's about like a a little over 130 pages long, where it talks about a little bit of a a little bit of a story, you know. You know, of events leading up to the Batman. And, you know, of course you get to read about Bruce and, you know, all that stuff. But you actually do get to learn... You actually do get to learn a lot about the Riddler in this book. And it's... It's fascinating. I recommend it. It's a very qu quick read. Even though, for someone like me, I, it takes me forever to just sit down and read something. Just sit down and read, boy! I do enjoy it, but, you know, 
just I just find myself busy with other things, I guess. But yeah, read that book. Um, it adds more to his character, and I mean, even if you don't read it, um, you got a very you know creepy character, a very cool modern twist to the Riddler that you know just. I love it. Okay, I said it. I said it. I didn't think I was going to say it, but then I said it, and I mean it. I love this Riddler. And this... <sighs> That's all I can say. I love this Riddler. Um, read that book. You can find it on, like, you know, local bookstore. Or may- maybe uh, If you don't go to a bookstore, go to, like, Amazon. It's pretty cheap. Maybe, like, ten bucks. I don't fucking remember. I buy things and I don't remember how much they they're priced. Sorry, but anyways, my number two <coughs> grief. Um, Liam Neeson's uh, Raish. Al- or I guess I'll call him Raz Al Ghul. I mean, he's technically Raish Al Ghul, but. In the movie, they call him Raz. So, for the sake, you know, of sticking with the movies, I'll call him Raz. Um. Now, this is the one I was talking about, like, talking about this villain. It will be a bit of a spoiler. Because, you know, they try to... They try to tell us there's a different guy that's Raz al Ghul. Which... Then they, you know... Then they... Tw- you know, a little twist. Um, it turns out Liam Neeson was really Razo Ghoul the whole time. And when you watch the movie back, it actually makes you appreciate the movie a little bit more. In my opinion. Because then you're going back in the movie and it's like all the Razo Ghoul stuff is like there. You, you know, Batman, he gets... Tr- or I should say Bruce Wayne... Bruce Wayne, he gets trained by Raz. In a lot of ways, they really understand each other. They respect each other. So when Bruce is, you know, confronted with the fact that these guys, as far as morality goes, are completely different people. You know, Batman being uh, being on the side of not killing people and um, Raz al Ghul being, you know, Okay, with genocide, you know, kind of the, kind of the polar opposites we're working with here, you know what I'm saying? You know, and then Raz al Ghul tries to paint the, you know, the genocide as, you know, for the greater good, which, you know, typically, if people say it's for the greater good, it, it means they gotta do some horrible shit in order to get there. So, yeah, if you ever hear someone say for the greater good, then... It means they're doing do some bad shit, especially in movies. Especially, you hear them. That could be somewhat true in real life as well. But you know, definitely in movies, um, if they say for the greater good, it means some bad shits about to happen soon. No, I'm saying shit. But yes, Liam Neeson's performance is really good in this. Oh, uh, he's definitely got the look. Like, if you look at him, it's just like, oh yeah, this guy totally looks like Ray Shao Ghoul. That other guy doesn't even, he's he had a totally different look going. But yes, you totally buy the fact that, you know, that these guys respected each other, but, you know, when push comes to shove... These guys are willing to, you know, kick the shit out of each other in order to, you know, in Raza Ghoul's words, do what is necessary. His way of saying for the greater good, when they were the case. But, whatever the case, well, are you ready for number one? One of the most predictable number ones of all time. You already know. Well, fuck it. I'm done slapping. Duh, it's Heath Ledger Joker. 
the best live action Batman film, um, villain ever. Maybe going to be of all time. Who knows? Maybe one day someone will dethrone him. Who knows? But at this point, um, Heath Ledger is still the very best Batman villain. Um, a live action Batman villain of all time. Well, Heath Ledger's Joker is just seen as one of the greatest villains of all time to this day. You know, you put him up there with all those greats. Um, Hannibal Lecter, um, the Terminator from the first movie when he was a bad guy. Oh, I can't all of a sudden think of villains. Um, uh, Kevin Spacey's character from Seven. What the fuck was his name? But yeah, he's up there with all those villains. And kind of like what I was saying earlier where, you know, so many people, you know, I guess, I don't know how many people were offered the Joker role for the Dark Knight, but, you know, so many people were just so scared and they didn't even want to try to step on the toes of Jack Nicholson's um, Joker performance. And... You know, Heath Ledger took that. You know, he had a little meeting with um, Christopher Nolan. They saw eye to eye. They knew where they wanted to take him. And despite everybody's... And I don't even necessarily know why everyone thought that Heath Ledger... I mean, I think it was a mix of... I don't know who people were exactly expecting to be casted out as, as the Joker. I would have been very interested to, you know, if the internet was as big as it was now, back then. I would have been really interested to hear what some of people's, um, you know, expectations of, as far as who the Joker was going to be. But yeah, people were pissed when Heath Ledger was cast. But, you know, they turned fast when this movie came out. I mean, even after Heath Ledger's um, Heath Ledger's untimely death, there were still people who was like, well, I'm going to go see this movie to show my respects. But, you know, some people still have their reservations, you know. They were still a little hesitant towards this film. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's sad, true, but I don't know. Dude, it's like, it's Jack Nicholson's performance, dude. How do you even beat that? And then you saw the film, and then you're like, okay, holy shit, what the fuck was that? Why was that, like, one of the best fucking movies of all time? And it's one of the best fucking movies of all time, because the Joker's in it. Because Heath Ledger fucking killed this motherfucking role. This was very much like Jack Nicholson was, like, the center of Batman. The Dark Knight and all damn near three hours of its runtime is all about the Joker. Someone once said, like, even when the Joker is not on screen and you're, you know, you're interacting with other characters, he's in the back of your mind. I'm like, what is he thinking? What is he doing? Like, what is he planning? And it's unnerving in, like, the best way. He's legit funny, even though... It's funny, too. It's almost a fault that he's funny. Because the Joker is supposed to be... you know, I guess it's, it's one of the possibilities is that the Joker is supposed to be a failed comedian. Because his jokes suck ass. So, you know, he'll laugh at his own jokes, but no one else will. But, you know, Heath Ledger's Joker is actually funny. So, you can't do that. Joker can't be funny. But then again, why not? He just got a dark sense of humor, I should say. But, you know, on on the on the other hand, this dude can be terrifying. That first that scene where, you know, he kills that one um Batman imposter is still one of the most terrifying things he will see like it's just it's a once in a lifetime type of performance that we've seen here that still holds up to this day 
and is still, you know, recognized for, you know, in the larger picture, one of the greatest villains of all time. And in an even smaller picture, obviously, Batman's greatest villain in live action history. Thus far, I will throw that out there because, you know. You never know when someone might come out and just blow our brains out with just like another magnificent performance. You never know. I always like to keep my mind open because there is a time where I was saying like there was never going to be a Batman movie better than The Dark Knight. There was never going to be a Spider-Man movie better than, you know, Spider-Man 2. Just within this last year, um... I have a new favorite Spider-Man and Batman film. So there's that. So now I'm looking forward to the next film. Seeing if they can braise the bar even more than... Oh, good. Oh, I'm sorry. I did so well without doing that. Now we get to see, you know, the next... Their next films to see if they can do the same. Raise the bar even more. Make it even better and more exciting. I don't know if it will happen, but it'll be nice and cool to see if it can, they can make it happen. But anyways, yes, that is my top 10 favorite Batman villains. Live action Batman villains, I should say. A little bit of a recap and, you know, or not really a recap. I'm just going to shoot them all down once again. Number 10 was Jim Carrey's The Riddler. Number nine was Killian Murphy's Scarecrow. I don't know why I said Killian Murphy's using the only Scarecrow. Number eight is Tom Hardy's Bane. I mean, I'm already saying the names. Number seven is Jack Nicholson's Joker. Someone I actually do have to mention the name because there's multiple ones of them. Number six is Colin Farrell's um, Penguin. Number five is Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. Number four is Aaron Eckhart's Tooth Face. Number three is Paul Dano's The Riddler. Number two is Liam Neeson's Ra's al Ghul. And of course, number one is Heath Ledger's Jokers. I think I started having a lisp at the end of that. Lisp. Heath Ledger's Jokers is number one. It, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. But yeah, that's my top 10. Um, Now I turn to you guys. What is your guys' top 5, 10, or maybe just like a top 3? Who are your favorite villains in the live action Batman films? And if you feel like it too, tell me like some of your least favorite Batman villains. Live action, remember that. Because I would like to know, because, you know. And if you do let me know, let me know why. Because, you know, that's probably the funnest part, you know, when, you know. That's the whole reason I like to hear other people's opinion. Because sometimes when you hear someone else say something, it will help give you a different perspective. And it will make you look at that character in a different way. You know. Like I said, always keep an open mind. An open mind. Don't be so close-minded. Open your mind. Bruh. Widen your horizons. And you will truly see everything. I don't know what the fuck is going on with me. I need to go to bed. Ugh. Yeah, I'm gonna go to bed. Which means, that's all I got for y'all tonight. No, no, shut your mouth. Thanks everyone for giving me a listen. I hope you enjoyed it. Enough to join me for the next one? If so, um, I'll see you all then. But until then, have a good night. Y'all stay safe. And of course, as always... Join the rant, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace.
Jared Leto sucks. Well, at least he's a joker. <laughs> <laughs>